Hello everyone, let's go continue this back of PLC HMI TF1800. In the previous video, we introduced how can we set up two screens. And in this video, I will base on these two screens and introduce how can we set up the buttons, the text field showing the data, integer, string, and the float value, as well as the indications, for example, the red indicator and the green indicator. So the buttons, indicators, and the test field for showing the data. These three elements, they are very common used elements in the HMI. From my personal experience, 90% functionalities of the HMI will use these three key components to implement the HMI functions. Okay, so firstly, let's drag this button. Once we drag out, we can see this is a very old style, that is a pure gray. So if we go to this visualization manager, uh, from here, we can change the button style. Personally, I like this style, the light blue here. For example, we can shift to this light blue style here. So once we go back to this screen, so we can see this button change to blue. It become a little bit fashion than before. So we can name this button the start push button. So once we go to this test, we can name it start push button. Okay, this is a static task. Okay, we can make it a, a larger. And then we can use this button to momentarily control the tag from this HMI, this start push button, this tag. From the, our logic, this start push button will control this bool digital one, this tag. Okay? And we will use the indicator to connect this bool digital one, this tag. So you can imagine after we connect the tag and once we press a button, press the button momentarily so this indicator will turn on. Once we release the button, this tag will go zero and the indicator will go off. We will do this test. So go to the screen one. And after we type in this start button, let's connect the actual tag. To allow this button control the tag, let's go to the input configuration from here. So we can see it has an on mouse down and an on mouse up. And this is the toggle. Toggle means we press one time, it's side one, and press next time, it's side zero. It's toggle. To momentarily control one tag, we will use the mouse down and the mouse up. The idea is we will use this on mouse down to set that tag and mouse up to reset that tag. So let's go here, double click, config. We will select this, execute ST code. Okay, use this as ST code. So from here, we can select input assistant. We find the tag. So the tag we declared from PLC HMI project GVL HMI. So let's browse this start push button here. Okay, HMI start push button. So once we press this button, it will trigger this on mouse down this event and this event will call this execute st code and from here we can set this tag to true okay click okay and then go to the mouse up the mouse up will reset give a force to this tag so let's click this uh, config and use this uh, execute st code and from here, the same thing. So input assistant, let's find this start push button and we can use false. Set a zero to this tag, okay? And then let's go here, the color. By default, that button shows a light blue here. And once we press, we want to show some difference. For example, once we press this button, we want to show green. So this green will be controlled by this item. It named alarm color. So I know this name a little bit confused. The alarm means this button was activated. So we can change this color to another color. By default, that is this color. So we can change another color. For example, change to uh, light green. That means 
without any touch, so the button default will show this light blue. And once we touch this button, it will show green. So to control the background color, we need to connect the tag. And because this button is controlling this tag, we can still use this tag on and off to show the different color. So the variable controlling the color, we will go to the color variables here and connect the same tag. So double click, click here, we can connect to the HMI, the start push button. Once we press this button, the button will turn on this tag, this variable. And because this variable equal to one, so it will shift to the color to green. And once we release, it will force, give a zero to this variable. And this background color will turn to the original blue. And after this, let's drag another indicator. So the indicator will we use the lamp switch and the beep maps here. And we can use the lamp here. Let's drag this lamp. This is a round indicator. And we will connect this lamp to the tag that come from this main, this tag, global tag, bool, digital one. We will connect this tag. So this variable will be controlled by this HMI start push button variable. Okay, let's go to the screen. And firstly, we can change the color for this lamp. So it basically have a different colors here. It can show yellow, red, green, blue, gray. For example, let's show the green. And once the signal gets on, so it will show light green. And once it's off, it show dark green. And then go to the variable. This variable will be used to connect the actual global variable. For example, let's click this small button, browse. Browse the tag. That tag come from the global GVL, the digital one. Okay, click. And now the lamp color will be controlled by this tag. We do a quickly test. So this is the button, this is the indicator. So let's click the save and build the project. Okay, here I have one type of problem. It should be the TRUE. Okay, let's go here. Okay, click the button and let's change this TRUE. True. Okay. And then this is a good time to show how to troubleshoot that. So the system will guide you where has a problem. Okay, after this, let's rebuild the solution. Until now, we are still in the first type of the HMI. So currently, we haven't initiated this target visualization. This basically used to use the button or indicators to test the PLC code. And if now we go to the system license here, so we will see the system just use the PLC license only. It do not need the any HMI license because this style is only used for template test. And as I introduced, from learning purpose, actually till now, this step is enough. We do not need any lessons. But even if after we need lessons, we still can activate this seven days, 12 lessons, even if the system activate the HMI lessons, okay? For learning purpose, if your trial lessons expire, you can click this uh, seven days trial lessons button and type in the same character and reactivate the seven days trial lessons. Another thing, because I installed this Twinkers 3 software in my virtual machine. So to use a virtual machine to run this system, so I need to go to the real time, double click, and I need to assign one isolated core of the CPU to this uh, Twinkers system. So firstly, let's click this read from the target and select this isolated core. You can see here, check out this. And make sure this isolated core assigned to this different task here. Okay, and then click this set to target. Basically set one isolated core because that allows this isolated core run this PLC project, okay? And after this, we can build the solution. Okay, and click the downstairs. Just activate the configuration. That means we will download the entire hardware to my system. The system is my Windows system. So we will use my current Windows system run this PLC and run this HMI system. Okay, and after this button shows this green, 
and then we can click this login. And now my PLC project and this HMI project is running in my Windows system. And don't forget to press this run button. My project it runs automatically. And now let's press this button. And because this button we set as a momentary function. So once I press this button, hold this button, so we can see the indicator turns a light green. And this button also turns to green. That's because we set the alarm properties controlled by this tag. Okay. So press this button, so it shift to it turn to green. And if we float this screen, let's watch this actual program. So this start push button connect into this button, and this indicator is connecting this variable. So let's see the actual status. So if I press this button, we can see it turn true, and the result digital one shows true. Okay, and do a simple test here. So let's put a timer here. Let's log it out. For example, let's go to the variable here, global variable. Let's declare one timer, FB timer one, timer. This TON is a delay timer. And then let's click this uh, build solution, declare this timer. And then let's go to the main. We will add a timer at here. So to use that timer, we can right click, click this input assistant. Let's go to the instant call. Go to the GVL, find out this function, find out this FB timer. Keep in mind we are using the instant call and click OK. So it will generate this input timer and then output this. So this time, this input, that is the momentary button, this push button. Okay, the time we will set, for example, two seconds here. We can write this variable at this queue output here and leave this ET empty. It will be fine. Another way we can use this way, delete this area and use this timer.q to control this tag. For example, we can use this way. Select this queue. So using this way, the start button need to press. So once it's on, after two seconds, after this delay, this digital one will turn on. Okay, so let's click this login, download this timer. It will show login with online change. Okay, let's click okay. It will download. Now let's open this screen. This also shows if you are testing some code and using the HMI is easy for you to press or look at some status. So this HMI function is very convenient, especially for troubleshoot or test some codes here. Now, if I press this key, we will see after two seconds, it will turn on. And then press again. Okay, we can see it got a delay and turn it on. Release. Okay, this is the button and the indicator. And then let me show how can we use the text to show the integer data. Okay, let me return this first. Let's make this going back. Okay, and now let's go to the program. Click this uh, logout. Okay, let's use GVL dot the data two. This data two will be controlled by data one. GVL dot data one. Okay. And then we will connect both variable into the HMI. From the HMI, we can type in the data control this data one. And then we can monitor this data two. So let's go to the screen one. To show the data or allow the operator to type in the data, we can use this test field. Let's drag this test field. To allow this test field to show the data, we need to type in the format. To show the integer data, we will type in this, percent %i. i means show the integer data. And then to show the value only, for example, this test field will be connected to this data too. Let's go back here and let's find out the test variables. Here, let's connect to the data too. Okay, that is the data too. So it's very simple. 
we need the format and then we need the data. So it will show this integer data. Okay. And next, let's add another one. Another one will allow the operator type in the data. And that data, that is uh, this one, the date one. So let's create another test field. Test field here. Okay, same thing. And same thing. So firstly, this test, the format, we need to present integer. Okay. And the value you need to show that is data one. That's the same thing. This is also the similar way with the previous one. So data one. Okay. And to allow this area can be type in the data, then we need to do a one additional configuration. Go to here, input configuration. Okay. From here on the mouse down, that means once we click this area, and then let's go to this config, and then let's find out write a variable. Click this right. Okay, it will show up here. The input type. So it will show how can we type in the data? We are going to use the number pad or use the keypad or use others. For example, if this is a data only, basically we will use this number pad. This selection use the test output variable. That means, so we will use the same tag at here. So we will use this. Or if this input data, we will use another one. We can click this, uh, use another variable and uh, select another tag. Select this, use the test. We will use the same tag. Okay. Also, you can click this, must to type in the password. Here, we can select the minimum and the max. For example, if you are going to use this integer to set one WAV, the WAV is a zero to 100%. So you can type in the minimum that is a, the zero and the maximum is a 100, okay? And now we can see these two test fields, they are almost similar. And personally, I will prefer set a little bit different for those fields can be typed in. So we can go to the color and we can go to the normal status and we can go to the frame color and set a slightly different on this frame. For example, let's browse and set a slightly different. We can set the dark brown. So basically show this field can be typed in. This is a monitor only. Now let's log in. Apply this change. So let's drag this screen and let's show the data also. And now if you click here, it doesn't allow you to type in the data because this field is the data shown only. And here, once we put the mouse at here, we will see the curves will show the difference. Okay, now if we click this, and this keypad minimum and the maximum it shows we set. And now if I set 50 here, click OK we will see the 50 will set to this tag. And because we have a logic here, so this 50 wrote to this uh, date 2 50 is showing here. Okay, let's click and uh, let's set 60. Click OK. Okay, 60. So 60 is set to this, this right to this, and uh, this date 2 shows here. So this is the integer data. Another common data need to show that is the, the real, the float value. So let me declare one float value. Okay, so let's go to the GVL. And here, let me declare float value that is the real. F value one, that is the real. Okay, let me build the solution. And then let's go to the screen one. And to set that real value, so we can use the same thing, this test field, copy and paste. Okay, paste here. But because we are going to connect the one real value, so this format will be the different. So this test, let's go to here. For showing the float, we will use the F here. And because the float, we have a decimal, so we can use this way to control the decimal. For example, we want four digit on the left of the decimal point and two digit on the right side of the decimal point. So we will show 4.2. Okay, we will use this format. And then the test variable, we will select another tag. 
this f value click ok again so this mouse down we will double check so this time the minimum and the maximum we can type in 100.0 0. 0. 0. okay so the variable it controlled will be the same thing as this uh, test variable okay enter okay let's click this login okay drag here and to monitor this float value so we can double click this variable and because this f value one was declared within this gbl so we can double click once we got online so we will see the actual value for this value or another way we can click this variable and right click click this add watch so we will collect some important variable together into one watch list so we will specially monitor the specific variable here and now we can type in the data for this float value for example we can type in 5400 dot 32 and we set four digit here and set a two digit after the decimal so click ok because of the limitation is 1000 so this value will not be accepted so we have to clear it let me type in a new value so 999.56 so we leave four digit on the left of the decimal point and the two digits on the right side so we can see this is a float value here and in the meantime we will see the data in the watch list it shows 99.56 okay that is the float and this is the integer keep in mind the format they are not the same this is the percent i this is the percent f all right let's temporarily park here in this video i introduced this momentary button and indicator as well as this uh, test field for showing the integer and the float value in next video i will show how can we config the toggle button that I turn on and turn off every time you press that button and the indicator for showing two digit colors and the test field for string type in and display see you in next video thank you for watching if you like this video please give me a thumb up if you like to watch more videos in my channel please subscribe and hit the bell thank you for watching